Yeah, it's uh, 10 o'clock, so I'll go ahead and call this meeting to order. Uh, first of all, I'd like to welcome everyone here this morning and thank you all for, for being with us. Uh, this is a special commissioner's court meeting for County of Star, April 8th. It's 10 a.m. Let the record show that we do have quorum. Everyone being present. I'm sorry, it's not. It's a regular meeting. Everyone, please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I believe the minutes are not ready, so do I have a motion to table? Those? Motion to table, Your Honor. Moved and second to table. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. The post. Motion carries. Mr. Pettis, uh, the claims, are they in order? Yes, sir. The claims are in order. Second motion. Moved and second to approve. Discussion. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Uh, I believe we have some people that are from. Uh, Mr. Chapa, you want to go sure. with your item? I believe that is uh, item number 10. And this is uh, to approve an order of issuance of certificate of obligations and to include the paying agent register as being Lone Star National Bank. Yeah. Uh, the uh, Attorney General approved the uh, issuance of the bond, but they wanted to include uh, some language in there uh, as to the paying agent and registrar. Uh, typically, when you have a bond issue and you have uh, payment coupons or whatever, which in this case we do not because it's, it's a private placement that we're buying directly, but they still wanted that language in there, and basically we just need Commissioner's Court approval on that. Are there any I questions? Move we approve the order. Yeah. Moved and second to approve. Discussion? All in favor, please aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. Um, uh, anyone else that needs to come before the court? Yes. What, what item were you? I'm sorry. We're actually not. Um, oh. Um, we were supposed to be in the schedule, but we're not. But we're from the Texas Department of State Health so, uh, Services, sir. Okay. Can we have a minute to talk about all Sure. We, we won't be able to take action on anything? No action. But, no action. Okay. Great. So good morning, uh, uh -huh. Judge and Commissioners. Um, we're here um, on behalf of Texas Department of State Health Services. My name is Monica Spinoza, and I'll be the incident commander this year for Operation Lone Star. And we have two new PIOs here. Um, that will be actually going through uh, the whole telethons and stuff for Operation Lone Star. So really quick, I just wanted to thank you guys. So again, this year we're having it at Rio Grande City. Um, the, the week is July the 22nd through the 26th, and uh, we'll have it at the AC Magnet Elementary um, School again this year. And then I'm going to change it to uh, our new PIO here, and she'll go through some of the screenings, some of the uh, services that we'll be having this year. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Good morning and thank you for having us here. My name is Maribel Juarez and I am with the Department of State Health Services as well. And this year we are going to be having immunizations for children, uh, screening of diabetes and hearing and vision, including blood pressure. Uh, we're also going to be doing sports physicals for any kids that are participating in any uh, school activities as far as sports. They'll be able to take advantage of that. And we're also going to be having dental services um, and vision. So in some locations we will be having um, some uh, glasses to op optometry that will go ahead and have glasses be prepared at that time uh, and some locations are going to have uh, to need the, re the prescription for the glasses. Um, also we're going to have uh, dental services for school age children and new, uh, younger uh, children here in Rio Grande City. Do you want to go to the service? Uh, Simply, I just, uh, my name is Leonel Vela, I'm uh, with the Department of State Health Services and uh, I just simply want to emphasize uh, some of the services that we're getting. I know that I was hearing in a news report this morning that there are some cases uh, that were found uh, 
uh, for kids that uh, probably are not immunized uh, in Hidalgo County. Uh, and um, I think it's really important to take advantages of the services that we're having in immunization. Uh, we would like to ask for your help in spreading the word uh, on Operation Long Star. And we would uh, like your help in getting people to the site, okay, because it's really important that uh, as a community, we help our community be healthy in, in, our, in our county. So uh, that's basically what, what we have to say. We are going to have some uh, sites. Uh, there are going to be two sites in Cameron County, two sites in Hidalgo County, a site here, and then a site in Laredo, Texas. And uh, again, all of these services will be going concurrently. Uh, one change that we have from last year is that we will uh, be open from 8 to 3. Last year and the years prior, we have been open from 8 to 4. Uh, but this time, uh, because of uh, trying, we, every time we end up going real late because, you know, people are still coming in at the last minute. And so we're trying to get the, uh, the military people out a little bit earlier at a reasonable time. So uh, basically that's it, and we thank the court for, uh, for your support and anything you can do to help us uh, and help the people in our community, that would be, that would be great. Thank you. Well, thank you all very much. And, and I, I do have a, a, a comment, I guess. Uh, I don't know who went to my office. Was it any of you? Or I know Dr. Vasquez and, and I and, and some people from went and gave us a brief presentation on Operation Stone Garden. And one of the things that they, they were concerned with was that the numbers have been dwindling uh, over the last couple of years. And what was suggested was maybe instead of having one site here in Rio, having one in Roma. Uh, and they said, well, we only have so many uh, doctors or personnel and what was suggested was that maybe having three days here, two days there, or, <coughs> you know, switching out, say you do immunizations and dental uh, in Roma two days, and then bring them to Rio for three days, and then the, the ones that were in Rio going to Roma, uh, something to see if we can get more people to go. Uh, was that discussed with you all? So I know that um, Dr. Pro, which is our, our medical exam, our regional, medical, regional director. medical director. I think that's who yeah, it that was. was the yeah. person that came and talked to you. Actually, yeah. it was my idea. I wanted to change it up to either to Roma because I know that um, we have other point of dispensing sites here, yeah. and um, that's my everyday job looking for uh, sites. Uh, to dispense medication or vaccinations if we ever need it, and so I, I kind of threw it out there. Let's let's let's, let's try Roma, um, but that's a great idea, and I think it was brought up many years back before my time, um, and that would be a great idea, especially now that we do have the Texas military that come and support us. The past two years, we've known that they have not actually supported us, so we actually manned the whole clinic along with volunteers. Um, I could bring it up to them. I would love to do that. I would yeah. love to have two, yeah, three days and, and then change it to Roma or any other city. And, and it, she did mention about uh, moving it to Roma, and and we thought that was uh, <coughs> that would be unreasonable because Rio Grande City is the center the center of the county, yes. mm -hmm. and people from La Victoria, La Gruya, of course, they have a clinic, but it'd be very difficult for them to go all the way to Roma. So we thought if, if we're going to have one place, it might as well be Rio. Centralized. But yeah. but we thought if, if we could switch between yeah. Rio and Roma, that that would uh, uh, that, that would help. Some previous years, we have uh, sent a contingency of our for at least two or three days to Roma. Okay. I know that we did that something like five or six years ago. Okay, so uh, possibly we will discuss with them. You know, okay. see if we can do that. I think that would increase your numbers. Okay. Yes. I heard, sir, they don't, the dental work is only for kids in school? Yes. Yes. In no, this side, yes. Rio Grande no City. No people, adults or anything that are not attending school. Yeah, we don't, they, they, uh, our Texas uh, dentist only provides, um, like, the um, sealants for the school age. Yeah, you know, there's a lot of people, adult people, in yes. dental care, and uh, they ask you about the offer. <laughs> They brought some last time, but I don't know this year, so, but there won't, there won't be taking any. Uh, so we've yeah. had in Rio Grande City just the, the preventive measures um, for dentists. The other sites have what's called RAM, it's a remote area medical um, uh, project that comes in every year, and those are the folks that provide 
the extractions or any other kind of dental work mm -hmm. and the eyeglasses with the prescription. Yeah. When do those come? So they come the same week, the same. but at the other sites. Um, unfortunately, we don't and get them here. And they don't come to real. We, we don't well, get them the, here. The, let me yeah. explain also that the services are not by county. In other words, yeah. anyone can go to any site and anyone from here can go to those sites. On the two sites in Hidalgo County, uh, they, they are going to have the dental services <coughs> for adults. And so anyone is welcome to come in. The only problem with that, to, to be honest, okay, is that usually people that want dental services are there, sometimes even the day before, to be in line because we only have a limited number of slots. But uh, the, anyone is welcome. Now, the other portion has to do with the eye services, okay, we will have a optometrist over there and they will be cutting the actual glass and then giving it to clients. So those services are a little bit more available and uh, anyone from this county is welcome to go to that county because it's not a, a, a thing by county, it, it's just a, an operation for whoever gets it. I understand that, but you know, like you just said, yeah. it's hard for them to come to Rio from the outside and have to go back all the way to Italy. Yeah, and the closest one would be um, actually in La Jolla in, yeah. or Mission. What? In Mission would be the closest one for Rio Grande yeah. community. It's a long way. Yeah, yeah. It's a long way. Yeah. And I know in the past they had reached out to, I think, Dentals at Care, um, that they do provide services, and we've reached out to them, to the local community here, to see if they want to provide at least a day or two of free services for, for the clients that are going to our site. And, I mean, it's a business. They're losing money if they come and do volunteer work. So it's, it, we've been trying to work that out so we can provide those services. What, what about if you reach out to our local dentists? We and did see that, if they I think, two years ago, and um, we didn't get a good... Oh. Um, Okay. Well, we could try again. It's, we're still early, um, so uh, as our PIOs, they're going to start reaching out to some of the services, and hopefully we'll get somebody that would volunteer. Okay, well, thank you very much. And we have some flyers here. We can leave, leave them here and maybe, okay, awesome. Yep. Thank you so much for your, thank you. for your time. Thank you. Thank you. You guys have thank a good you. day. Thank you. Anyone else that needs to come before the court at this time? If not, we'll, we'll go with our agenda on reports. The gas, Mr. Andres. Morning, Judge, Commissioners. My report should be on your package. I'd like to just highlight a couple of things on it. Uh, JF Utilities has f uh, finished. The steel pipe is no longer in our system which is a big accomplishment for us. Um, the state is, they went away with steel pipe and PVC uh, service lines all over the state. So uh, we're halfway there. I've got about 24 miles of PVC that needs to be replaced. The rest is already poly. Uh, the other thing is uh, an update on, on the revenue policy uh, that we were assigned. Some accounts were, were staying behind, and I'd like to uh, positively report that on the first month that we uh, dealt with this problem, we had 350 accounts closed uh, because, they're, uh, because they're not paying on time. Uh, February went down to 155, and March closings, which was this, this report, is 107. So little by little, it's, it's going down. Uh, uh, in the process, how many are of delinquent? 107 are still delinquent. <coughs> uh, yes, sir. They're they're delinquent to the point who to they won't pay till the next bill is it gets there. Mm -hmm. So we're trying to get them away from that uh, because then you got two bills. Yeah. Uh, it, it's it's kind of like a cat and mouse game. Wait till the last second and it'll come and pay you. Do we charge a late fee? Yes, sir. We do. Okay. And and some of them, well all all of them pay. There's, there's some accounts that are just naturally delinquent uh, because of their system of paying, the business accounts. Uh, but that's, it's been ongoing forever. We won't, we won't be able to fix those, but they're few. The ones that we were having problems with were residential uh, uh, connections, and that, those are the ones that have been really coming down. Okay. Uh, in the process, we've had uh, only 
uh, a total, I don't know if it's good or bad as a, at this point, but we've only had a, a total of 12 accounts that have been closed because of this action uh, throughout Very the whole good. system. So it, it hasn't been that many. Any questions? No, Excuse me, but I'll have to leave, Judge. I've got a KCTM road problem. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Thank you. Transfer station. Good morning, Judge Commissioner. Morning. Uh, you have my financial report there with you. Uh, everything is normal. Everything is operating well. Uh, still waiting on that tire cut. Uh, they told us it was going to be probably another seven weeks. And uh, I wanted to take the opportunity to thank Commissioner Garza for all the help and guidance on the repair for the loader. We he, he got it into the yard this past Friday, so we want to thank him for that. And uh, they did a good job. There are little bits and ends here that they need to come and check on it now that, that it's in operation. But uh, trucks and wheels are very, very knowledgeable and very easy to, to contact with and talk to them. So we have all that. And also, I want to thank Commissioner. Alvarez uh, for helping us with the pavement and outfall there in the transfer station. We have some potholes and it's going to help us with some outfall there before that. Any questions, comments? Thank you, Mr. The tax assessor, Ms. Alina. Judge, good morning, commissioners. Good morning. Uh, the, my report is in front of you. It's in your package. This is my report for this month. The total countywide collections for March 19 were $1,298,051. In March 2018, there were $1,035,277. There was a total collection of 262,774 more than last year. Year to date, we have collected $401,381, less than last year. Our to total collections, current collections for Star County entities were $518,230. Current collections in March 2018, there were 396323 There was a total cur current collection of 121907 more than last year. Year to date, we have collected $80,460 less than last year. Our total delinquent collections for March 2019 just for Stark County were 239,515. Total delinquent collections in March 2018 were $260,178. There was a total delinquent collections of 20,663 20, less than last year. Year to date, we have collected $254,673, less than last year. As of March 20, uh, 31st, 2019, the tax office has collected 92% of the projected collections. Projected collections remaining are $1,160,823.66. There is my report. Do you have any questions? Up to date, we have collected 93, 93 of the projected, 92, I'm sorry. Yes. I'm sorry. When you did the budget, what marks I believe it was 80, 85, 86, somewhere. Out of 13 million, 893, 802, or 86%. Or 86%. So yeah. Budgeted 86. That's the projected, not the collected. Okay. Uh -huh. So we went, we already collected over the projected collections. No. No, so we've collected 92% of the projected. That's what I'm saying. 92 of the projected. Right. Yeah. Okay. 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 Yeah. Okay.
Okay. Now, now this uh, collections, Ms. Salinas, do they include the delinquent collections también? See, that that's also might be a little misleading uh, because that's a separate line item. No, it's not. It does not? Okay, okay that's good. Okay. That, okay. You have any questions? No, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. County Clerk, Mr. Gonzalez. Good morning, Judge Commissioners. Good morning. Um, you should have a, a report in front of you. For the month of March, um, our vital preservation fee, we had uh, 211 new filings for a total of 234. Our records management was uh, 554 new filings for a total of 6,385. Uh, 6, Our copies, we had 195 copies for a total of 3,180.40. Our records archive fee, 463 new filings for a total of 6,136. Our marriage licenses to the state were 39 new ones for a total of 1,384.50. Uh, our birth certificates to the state was one for a total of $1.80. Our birth state were 171 new filings for $349.20. And then we had uh, 666 new filings for the county clerk for a total of 17,726.15. And then for courthouse security, 435 new filings for a total of 660. Uh, our total due for the month of March to the treasurer uh, is thirty six thousand fifty seven dollars and five cents uh, we have seen an increase for the month of March a little bit um, so far so good as far as not collecting any more cash we haven't had any issues with the clients or with our constituents uh, we went ahead and took away that three percent uh, I know uh, Commissioner Gasa had had a question on that we're kind of waiting on the county attorney's office for uh, some guidance from TAC so right now what we're doing is we're charging a dollar. We're charging a dollar just across the board for using the credit card machine uh, until we get uh, further guidance on that. Um, just a quick update uh, with Blanca Juarez, and that's that uh, project to get uh, everything um, filed. We started doing that, but we had to abruptly stop because we were putting in the uh, addresses that are on those original files. A lot of those people don't have the same addresses. So we're going to go back to the same thing. When we put them in, send them to the appraisal district, they're going to be sending it to the wrong address. So Blanca asked us to stop until she could meet with uh, Commissioner Garza. I think she wanted to meet with him, with myself, with the uh, uh, chief appraiser, and a couple of the entities, uh, Ameda and, and uh, one from the school district. So we could come up with a plan to maybe have an updated uh, address for these people before we file and send them back their, the corrected deeds. How, 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 do we, how, how would we go about to get the correct address? Uh, a lot of people still go visit with her commissioner, with, with Blanca, and you know we're trying to figure it out. How does she know that those addresses are not correct? She's told me that because they're so old, when they brought them in back three years ago, a lot of the people have already resold or left or, uh, you know, they don't have those properties. So if, if they resold, if they say somebody resold that property, mm -hmm. it should be on file it's or recorded, eh? It should be. They're not always accurate. That's the, the problem we're, we're finding ourselves. Because, you know, if you're recording an old deed, okay, and, uh, and, he, and these people are just going to file the new deed, I know she says there's an issue with some of them still being as uh, porciones and some are now coming up as lots and it's the same thing so it, it's a big uh, mess that I'm going to try to do if she doesn't reach out to Commissioner Garza I'm going to probably take the head here and, and get all the entities together so we could try to come up with a with a solution you know we, we had a uh, I'm sure you all saw a joint press release for uh, the census uh, in Hidalgo with, with uh, Judge Cortez. And talking to him, he mentioned something that I thought would be very interesting for us to do. He said that their, of course, their planning department is huge and their appraisal district is huge. That the appraisal district uh, got together with the, with the planning departments and they did a rooftop 
addressing on every house. You know, they, they got on the, the aerials, and every house, every roof that showed, they addressed it. And they came up with 25,000 homes that were not paying taxes, were not on the system. So I can imagine what ours looked like. Yeah. Uh, I think that would be a, a great idea if we could get the appraisal district to, to do something like that. One, it increases our tax rolls, and two, we ensure that every single person gets counted in, right. in the county because now we know every address where there's homes and, and we can go visit them. Right. Uh, maybe that's one way of addressing those areas okay. uh, with, a, with a rooftop. That day, the appraisal league has been working on that. They have picked up a lot of uh, houses, especially in the Roma area, yeah. that were not in the system and have been for a long time. And they picked up a whole bunch of them. Okay, if, if maybe that that be your and first they're, they're start. Doing it, and now they can pinpoint them to a system that it was a mapping system, mm -hmm. where every house is located. But they were, I mean, you're no, talking about imagine. a bunch of them. Not, not even registered. And I've been paying taxes for a long time. Maybe you could get some addresses. I'll get together with Ms. Guerra and, and see how we can do it. I know the, the reason was that we weren't, we were filing these things and then we're sending back the originals to the address yeah. on there. I mean, hopefully we're hoping that if it's correct when they're going to stay there, but if not, that they bounce back to us and, and they yeah. come back to us. Now, if it's a vacant lot, yeah. you know, that's, that's going to be a different thing. But, yeah. Yeah, but they have been pinpointing a lot of them, A lot of not many, not only, but most of them in Roma, but they, through all these areas, not only that area, they have been finding out how that on the road. Yeah. Uh, one more thing, uh, Judge and Commissioners, uh, the uh, preservation project that uh, uh, Dennis Gonzalez had started uh, is complete. It has been put in at the county clerk's office. Uh, it is really nice. Uh, they did a really good job with it. Uh, they uh, preserved the books from A through Z with the exceptions of H and J that uh, one, they just have the microphone, the other one, it's not available at all. Uh, the original price on that project was 136 It actually is less actually 117,000 so uh, I believe Becky was going to give it to you so you could sign the updated one um, what we are going to look into now is, is hopefully digitizing the rest of the stuff so we can get everything you know online before we, we continue with preservation but it, it is really nice I do uh, uh, invite you all to go by and, and look at the books there and, and they came out really nice any other questions thank you thank you, thank you. Sheriff's Department, Chief. Projected revenues for March 2019. Looking at the collection from the city of Rio Grande, $510. Roma, $930. Border Patrol, $156. Uh, the inmate telephone system, $1,500. The marshal service, $124,768. And Hidalgo County with $122,202 for a total of projected revenues of $250,000 with $66. The count for April 2nd was 77, and Hidalgo County 69. As of today, we're at 85 and 74. And the monthly average for Hidalgo County was 55, and the monthly average for federal inmates was 97 for March. We have an increase from March 2018 to March 2019 of $10,918, <coughs> more than last year. And we've currently correct, collected or projected to collect 56% of the uh, projected revenues so we're at a uh, total collected 1 million 466 with uh, 1 million 400 uh, 1 million 466 432 we have an additional increase from last year of 98,000 to 96 dollars through today correct through today, through today. That's very good. Any questions, comments? Thank you, Arnold. Thank you, Chief. Appreciate it.
International Bridge. Good morning, Judge, Good morning. Commissioners. Um, this is a report for March 2019. Uh, the total revenue from traffic is $214,015, and we show a decrease of $18,651 with 50 cents for the month of March 2019 compared to the month of March 2018. And we show an increase of $13,913 of with 50 cents on collections for the month of March 2019 compared to the month of February 2019. We have other collections of $175.74 and the grand total for collections for March 2019 it's $214,190.74. Do you have any questions? Judge, I was, I was thinking over the weekend, how can the federal government come and shut down something that doesn't belong to them? If the bridge belongs to us. You know no, what I mean? But they're, they're only, on, they're only gonna Trump shut down what comes in and what goes out. Here we go. If it doesn't belong to us. Anyway. Yeah, they, they can shut it down because they control the, the port, you know, the federal agencies can just so say. We'll, we'll we send the sheriff department and the police department to take care of it. <laughs> anyway. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Richard. The, the, the treasurer's the report. The December the uh, good morning, Judge. Good morning, uh, Commissioners. Uh, you have my report in front of you. Um, this report is for the month ending uh, March 31st, 2019. Uh, the ending balance for the general fund it was at 4,840 with uh, four million. Two, uh, I'm sorry, 4,840,032 with 47 cents. Uh, at this time last year, it was at 3,057,421 with 47 cents. Uh, that's uh, an increase of uh, 1,782,611. Uh, the ending balance for the road and bridge uh, is at 1,106,546 with 11 cents. Uh, last year at this time it was at 1,148,140 with 58 cents. That's a difference of 41,594 with 47 cents less. The ending balance for the enterprise funds is at 750,256 with 11 cents. At this time last year it was at uh, 697,842 with 6 cents. Uh, that's uh, uh, an increase of uh, 52,414 with five cents as compared to last year. Um, the dra drainage district, the ending balance is at 943,385 with 11 cents. At this time last year, it was at 660,538 with 72 cents, um, a difference of 280,846 with 39 cents. This brings the uh, total, uh, the grand total ending balance uh, for at uh, 7,640,219 with 80 cents. Last year at this time it was at 5,565,942 uh, with 83 cents. It was uh, a difference of 2,074,276 with 90, 97 cents. Uh, any questions? Just a comment. Uh, on the road and bridge, the reason it shows less than last year is because, and I've been working with, with the auditor's office, uh, and hopefully we can do that this week, to transfer the monies that were used to pay 2018 bills from the commissioners with 2019 money. So that money will be put back into your budgets, hopefully, like I said, by the end of the week. Uh, we're working on it. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> Auditors, Mr. Pettis. <laughs> morning, Judge Commissioners. Good morning. I believe you've got my report yes, in sir. front of you. Uh, this report is for the month of March 2019. Uh, this represents basically uh, half of the year, six months worth. Uh, to be a little more precise, it's 49.86%. Uh, we uh, show uh, the reconciled balances for the general fund of 4,701,234.30. Uh, 
Uh, these numbers are a little bit different from uh, Mr. Gonzalez's in that they're reconciled numbers. His were actual cash balances. Uh, the road and bridge fund is 995,414, and the payroll clearing fund was 448,967. Uh, the general fund expenditure report uh, shows a percent expended of 52.37%, which is just a little bit above where we're at year to date. <clears throat> I won't go through the individual ones. Um, the road and bridge fund consolidated expenditure report shows a percent expended of 49.39%. And on the revenue side, we've got the general fund with uh, an amount of um, 11, 11,877,304 or 67.16%. Road and bridge is at 4,235,863 or 69.06%. And on the enterprise funds, revenues and expenditures, we've got international bridge with uh, percent received of 40, I mean 40.54 percent and expenditures of 40.38 percent. Gas operating is uh, received 51.18 percent and expended 49.23. And on the transfer station, we have a percent received of 49.66 and expended a 58.84 percent. On uh, page six, you've got the summary of the debt owed by Star County as of 331.19. Uh, we show a total of 2,047,849. That concludes my report. If you all have any questions. No, sir. Thank you, Mr. Pettis. Thank you. I guess we'll move on to item number six, and that's to approve the vendors list. Mr. Pettis, is that? Second, Your Honor. Moved and second to approve. Discussion? All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Uh, item seven. It's an action item this to approve the deputation of Patricia Cortez for the county clerk's office. Motion to approve, Your Honor. Thank you. Moved and second. Discussion? All in favor, please aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Uh, item 8 is a resolution to approve this in support of Operation Linebacker Grant 2994-705. I move that we approve the resolution, Your Honor. Second, Your Honor. Moved and second to approve. Discussion? All in favor, please aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. That's an operation. Uh, item 9 is also to approve a resolution, and this is for the Board of Protection Prosecution Unit Grant uh, 2536 109. This is from the District Attorney. I move that we approve the resolution, Your Honor. Moved and second to approve. Discussion? All in favor, please aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Uh, item. Yeah, item 11 through 18 are budget amendments. Uh, Mr. Pettis, are they in order? Yes, sir. We reviewed those. Uh, those are all within their own departments. <coughs> Motion to approve, Your Honor. Second motion. Second motion. Second. Discussion? Motion carries. Uh, item 12 is to approve the resolution to approve the budget amendments. Motion to approve, Your Honor. Second. Second. All in favor, please aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Item 19. Let's see. Anyone else that I left out? If not, it is uh, 1040 nah. and pursuant to section 551.074, we will now go into executive session to discuss order of salaries 
to uh, discuss personnel policy manuals, amending number five, policy on vacation, policy on sick leave, policy on holidays, and policy on emergency leave, and to discuss possible action on the Texas Workforce Solution Vocational Re Rehab Services, and also 551.071 for the purpose of discussing possible action conveyance on Living Word Church of one acre track. We'll be back shortly. It's 11.15 and we're back in open session. Uh, under the order of salaries that were discussed, is there a motion to approve them as presented? Second, Your Honor. Moved and second to approve. Discussion? All in favor, please aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Uh, under the amendment number five, to the policy on vacation, sick leave, holidays, um, and emergency leave. Do we have a motion? Motion to approve, Your Honor. Are, are we approving or the, or, on the cup time? Yes, or, yeah, or no. no, that's still yeah, not. No, that's Amendment 5. Am I correct? Okay. No, just motion to approve. Motion. Okay, moved and second to approve. Discussion? All in favor, please aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Under the uh, Texas Workforce Solution, that was really just uh, informational, yeah. so no action needed. And then on the issue on the Living Word Church, the one acre track, uh, Assistant County Attorney Pettis, uh, we'll, we'll get with you, sir, so that we can work this thing through. Uh, do we need a motion for that? No. Okay. No action needed. <clears throat> Second, Your Honor. Moved and second to adjourn. All in favor, please aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you, gentlemen.